there is something we need It's a leap of faith Oh, if you have the will and the moment to spare It's a beautiful world out there It's a beautiful world out there The walk starts at the small town of Creef where ample on-street free parking can be found. Creethm is the second largest town in Perthshire, after Perth itself. It is wrapped around the slopes of the Knock of Creeth as they descend to meet the River Erne in its valley to the south. Creeth was already well established as a town by the time the River Erne was bridged here in around 1690. The following year it became the site of Scotland's first public lending library, the town's growth and wealth stemmed directly from its excellent communication links, both to the highlands and the lowlands. By 1700, vast herds of highland cattle from across northern and western Scotland were driven along the traditional drove roads to the trysts, or cattle markets, at Creef. Each year, up to 30,000 cattle arrived on foot for sale in the town, and Creef gained a reputation for wellness as highland drovers far from home enjoyed the fruits of their efforts after the sales. There were setbacks in 1716 and 1745 when successive generations of Jacobites attacked Creef. but despite this the 1700s saw continued growth in the wealth and the size of the town. General Wade's military road building efforts of the 1730s placed Creef on the main route from Stirling to Perth and provided a much better all-weather route north to Aberfeldy and beyond. By the 1770s, cattle increasingly tended to head to the markets in Falkirk rather than Creef, leaving Creef to reinvent itself as a resort. It became popular with the rich and famous of the day who wanted to take advantage of the town's attractive scenery and south-facing slopes. The knock is full of surprises. A climb to the summit through the dappled shade of the oak, pine and birchwoods will often reveal some of its secrets. Keep a watching eye for its bushy-tailed residents. The knock is home to both the larger, less camera-shy grey squirrel and the rarer, more bashful red. Elsewhere, the grey squirrels outcompete the reds for food, but the knock is one of the few places in Britain where both species live in apparent harmony. Near to the path is a large rock called the Cradle Stone. Local people believe that if you leave a coin in a hole in the stone you can make a wish come true. The stone's real history is equally amazing. It is formed of a different rock from the knock itself and was brought here by an ancient glacier which left the stone high and dry when it melted. From the shady trees you merge onto a heathery hilltop with spectacular views in all directions. The story of the Highland Boundary Fault Line lies below you in the mountains and strath that surround the town to the north and south. Over 400 million years ago, the collision of two landmasses formed what we now know as the Scottish Highlands and Lowlands. Today, Creef sits proudly astride them. As we leave the knock path behind, and join the Hosh path, you can almost detect the faint scent of whisky in the air. The path leads through Glen Turret, home to Scotland's oldest distillery, and in earlier times the hiding place for some of Creef's numerous illicit stills. The wooded glens around the town were perfect for illegal distilleries. The trees offered fuel for the distilling process, oak and ash make the barrels to hold the finished whisky, and shelter to hide them from the dreaded excise men. The other vital ingredient was pure, clean water, which the tumbling peaty burns provided in abundance. Today, Glen Turret Distillery still uses the waters of the turret burn to make its whisky. The waters of the burn have always been important to Creef, 
After the disappearance of the stills, the water was used to power the town's mills, the heart of its industrial success. Now the turret reservoir supplies water to places as far away as Grangemouth and Clickmannan. Though the illicit stills may be gone, as we head back along the tree-lined tracks, it's not hard to imagine a thin wisp of smoke curling from the woods and the dull thump of a mallet on barrel staves. As you wander through the woodlands, you will see the unmistakable sight of the ash tree. The ash, with its distinctive black buds, provides very strong, flexible wood, used for many purposes, from shinty sticks to barrel hoops, farm tools to shepherd's crooks. In folklore, the tree is believed to ward off evil spirits. Its burnt bark has even been used to cure toothache.